暗いここはなんと暗いのだ石畳の路地を歩く革靴の乾いた音はないすでにここには一つの音しか私の靴音もない私の息遣いの音もない歴史上最高の繁栄を謳歌する大英帝国首都ロンドンの暗がりを歩く私の息も靴音もないのだここには誰もいないここには誰もいないのだそして私は今は何の音を出すこともない誰もいないここで音はたった一つ闇から迫り来る恐ろしいあいつの音だ聞こえてくるのはその音一つ私の背後にあったその音一つ音の正体は私には言うことができないただ無限の暗がりであるとしか私は逃げることができなかった私は追いつかれてしまったのだ背後から迫られ巨なるアギトに飲み込まれて私は殺されて消失するのだただ死ぬのではない未来へ私は進むことができなかった過去を権限させることもできず私や少女が恐れる者さながらの力で私はもはや飲み込まれ砕かれてしまったもう遅いもう遅い私が闇ならぬ身であったがゆえに闇を私は克服することができなかったかの闇は方程式によって私の命を砕いたシャーロットすべてすべて透明にして合体なる君だけはこの果てなき苦しみから逃れてくれるとそう信じて At long last At long last, one man disappeared from this place. Mabuta o akeru. Hidoku mabusi to kanjiru. Konna ni yoru no rondo wa kurai no ni. The engine lights shining faintly in the fog and mist made her think it was far brighter than that black city. She'd awoken in London. Only a little of that black city's presence remained. Because there were no people, because there were no cars, she thought that vaguely and woke up. そして二人の人影キレキレの天国写真のような記憶 She couldn't remember the details but despite that she was still shaking Vague memories of terror the voices of the monsters and the black man they had left a slight tremor in her body Terror what the black city and monsters brought about Terror what the black one-eyed man brought about Oh he's here Oh he's here 声あの男の声だった私は背筋を震わせて硬直する。She looked around. Behind her there was the form of a man covered in black. Only the man was there. Only he was standing amidst the fog and smoke. There was no form of a woman in army uniform. ご苦労だったな、キティ。お前のおかげで逃さずに済む。She could see his form, his face. The engine lights shone upon it. She remembered it. 竹の長い黒のコートだけではなくて。全身すべてが黒黒い髪黒い服黒い眼帯はフェイクではなく本 But his skin isn't black and his red ribbon thing or whatever that is Deep in the man's eye there seemed to be the presence of that frighteningly cold and inorganic black city Mr. Holmes そう名乗った覚えはない
俺はシャーロック・ホームズではない俺をあれと一緒にするなあなた誰なの何を言葉が出てこない尋ねるべきことがあまりに多すぎてホームズ怪物黒い町女性シャーリーのことも怪物を殺したことも She knew nothing. She wanted to ask everything, but her lips wouldn't move. She didn't ask the man, What are you trying to do? If he wanted to, he could have killed someone like her in an instant. Monsters. He could even kill those monsters. Killing a human would be easy. But why would he want to? M. An initial, code for something. Or was that really his name? She didn't even know that, not one thing. Mary simply stood there blankly. She quietly watched the man walk towards her, his shoes making noise. One foot away, just like when the monster of flames approached her, the man comes even closer than that. His blue eye was gazing at Mary. He held out his right hand. His right hand, huh? That reminds me of something. すべてが不可解で理不尽で奇妙で今も怖くて震えが止まらないのに私は動けなかった、うん、お前は事実だけを見ていればいいそれだけでいい好きなだけ怯えろ震えろだがお前は選択する必要がある。Choice. The man's... M's hand was horribly cold. It had body heat. However, it made her think of ice. Her body began to tremble even more, just as he said she was afraid. Why would she do that? Why would she want to do that? Bait. Bait for killing monsters. She didn't know why he did that, but Mary understood that she was valuable. Her body wouldn't stop shaking, however, she felt a strange calmness. あなたの言葉に従えば私はどうなるの死ぬだろうお前が諦めた時に全てが終わるだがもしもお前が諦めなければお前の願いは果たされるシャーリーをあなたは目覚めさせてくれるぞくりとしたひどい寒気が肩を大きく震わせる怪物よりも恐ろしく思えた男に私は取引しようとしてるそうだお前の願いは果たされるタタールの門が消え去るときシャーロット・ブロンテは目覚めるあなたがいいえ私にはわからないあなたの言葉の意味あの怪物たちは何あなたは誰 There were many other things she wanted to ask she was only able to voice two of them She didn't know why she voiced them. She just thought she needed to ask something if she was going to make a deal with this man. If she was going to make a contract with this man, she felt like she needed more information. Hmm, and Seki and Nuinganok, the only fairy tale, were the Kikai. Weren't they? So, I. The hand on a jaw moved slightly. His gaze focused on Mary's right eye. Was she imagining it? His eye, for some reason, warped as if looking at something far too bright. Whatever it is, 
メアリー・クラリッサ・クリスティ私は答えは決まっている迷うことなんかあるはずがないそうよねシャーリー私はあなたに私はまぶたを閉じる彼の目を見て答えたくはなかった Why not? 誓うわあなたに誓うだからお願いサーリーを助けて願いは果たされるお前が決して諦めない限り待てしかして希望せよ The night dawned the town awakened from its light sleep The sounds of engines powering the city sprung up here and there alongside the activities of humans. The darkness of night disappeared, and the engine lights, having fulfilled their duty, lost their light. The few remaining birds told of the dawn's arrival. Engine City London, one of the world's biggest cities and the heart of Britain. Few knew that fearsome monsters were running rampant through it, only those connected to the society. And perhaps those who detained the position of Diogenes at the foot of her highest, the queen who governs Britain. Baker Street 221B. There was a man in a room which was far from orderly. Many knew the man's name, the leaders of criminal organizations that never hesitated to kill, the head of a secret society writhing in the darkest corners of Europe. Also, yes, a great many Londoners. His courageous stories were known far and wide through newspapers and biographical novels. He was a man with a pipe in one hand, the man set to see to the death of all abysses of knowledge. The only one of the world detectives whose great achievements were known not only in England, but in the whole of Western Europe, and even the central northern empire of Kadath. The man said to re revere the truth behind every incident in Europe. The man who called himself the king of detectives. The man called a genius despite not being a scholar. The one and only man granted the auspicious title of He Who Knows by the Central Northern Empire. His appearance matched the biographical novels, A Hawk Knows, and Yes. The man's name was Sherlock Holmes. He was an incredibly busy detective. So that's the real Sherlock Holmes, huh? Naruhodo. 君の言わんとするところは理解したよまた随分と難題を持ち込んだものだねマイクロフトは何をしていた With who is he speaking? And who is m i c r o f t いいやそれはとうまい彼がエンジン回廊の使用を許可したのならそこには国家的理由が存在しているはずだしかしワトソン不在中にエスキュージアンの発生エスキュージアンの発生今回の事件はまあ本にはできまいが彼がもしもこれを知れば悲しむだろうね。He was talking with someone, something standing suddenly in the room. 我が兄も人使いがあらに。君からも忠告しておいてくれたもん。So it's not a person, it's a thing. タイムズの勇敢にはまだ間に合うな。通り魔は逮捕ということでよろしいのか。警官隊による射殺か面白みにかける演出だとは思うがねそれが依頼であるというなら仕方がないしかしね The light in his eyes set to see through all fixed on the many high rise buildings he could see through the window They belched out smoke which filled the sky He glared angrily at them またもや私の仕事を増やしてくれた男にはいずれ礼をせねばなるまい。まあ、M、あ、M。あの、貴重な、どうけものめ。Doesn't really look like a clown。さて。I'm in shows again. The man spoke. He was a man wearing a strange mask. It looked similar to a clown's and like a French aristocrat from the previous century. A strange person. The mask and clothes made him think that. It is said that the countless fictions spread from that man's mouth, that man who now began to speak to the person before him. A room with a strange pattern on its marble floor, the man sitting on the sofa and one other were there. I wonder if the other man is the same that spoke to uh, Sherlock Holmes. People called it a space of tranquil knowledge to the same few people who spoke the man's name. 
A space of tranquil knowledge. In this place, it is said to have that even an infant's whisper would surely reach his ears. A room made using knowledge from the organization the man belonged to, which even made possible the multiple simultaneous conversations performed by a holy man of the Far East. A secret room of darkness, could it be called an altar? Sate, of the beginning of the grand experiment of the beginning of profound cognizance and the start of a new era. What could that be? There was laughter in the man's voice, though with the one he spoke to was silent. And what would that be? What? There was ridicule in the man's voice, so the one he spoke to was silent. そうでないこともあるでしょうが、そうでないこともあるでしょう。さて、我らが愛してやまない人間の皆様、どうかご将来があれ。二人目の調子はすこぶる良い模様です。ご案じめされることはありません。いずれタタールの門は開きましょう。
愛しいメアリーへ少しだけ時間がかかった焦る気持ちが読解の邪魔をするそれでも読み取れないことはないシャーリーの言葉あなたがこの電報を愛しいメアリーへあなたがこの電報を読む頃には私は死んでいるかそうでなくてもきっとあなたやアーシェとアフタヌーンティーを楽しむことはできていないのでしょうねごめんねメアリーきっとあなたは混乱しているでしょう何が起きたのかさえ分からずに混乱させてしまっていると思いますごめんなさいでもそれでいいのよあなたは知らなくても良いことなのだからお願いもしもあなたが私を心配するあまり何か危ないものに関わりかけているのだとしたらお願いだからやめて忘れて忘れてしまって嫌なこと怖いことの全部と一緒に私のことはどうか忘れて私はきっと大丈夫だからお願いメアリー真面目に勉強をしてねアーシェとはずっと仲良しでいてちょうだいねあなたはちゃんと明日を楽しく生きてお願いお願いねかわいいメアリー私の大好きなメアリー泣いてはダメよずっと笑っていてメアリクラリッサあなたがどうか幸せでありますように It took her a little while to interpret the text Only a short little while, just the few minutes between turning on the engine type heater and feeling the room warm up. Yes, that's right, she hadn't turned it on. Yes, that's right, she hadn't written any more of the story. She still had private lessons with the professor to go to, and the promise to go with everyone to the theater and to Harrods, and to come over for dinner once every month. Come to think of it, they'd made that promise too. There were lots of things they should have done, they'd made lots of promises, but. They couldn't do them now. They couldn't move on from here. Her legs wouldn't move, nor would her hand holding the stationery. What did move were her eyelids and the tears falling from them and her lips. She gripped the stationery tight, tight. It made a crumbling sound. It had such a light texture, far too light for such heavy words. Tears fell. They made the paper wet and the ink run. The characters warped. <laughs> もしももしも何かがあってあなたに何かがあったら私シャーリー大丈夫よメアリーは大丈夫強いものだからだからねシャーリーに何かあったらメアリーがきっと助けに行くわ約束したもの約束うん約束うんありがとう I guess that scene marked the end of the first chapter. Hmm? 
The King of Smoldering Ruins. いっぱい泣いていいのよ。私が拭ってあげるから。ね、メアリー。泣かないわ。私、男の子にだって負けないのよ。くらいここはなんて暗さなんだ石畳の路地を走る革靴の乾いた音が響くそれ以外に何の音もないいや違う他にもあるだろうそうだ聞こえるのは俺の靴音だけではない逃げるためにと走るこの俺の靴音以外に息遣い喉から漏れる声ではない音がある誤った歴史を歩み続ける我が大英帝国首都ロンドンの片隅を走る男の荒い息この俺の喉の音 I wonder who that is who speaks here now Is it the German guy? ここには誰もいない What was his name? そんなことは初めから分かっているんだ時間がないそう焦る気持ちが俺の足を動かしてしまう走る走る俺はエンジン街灯の明かりの下でせめてこのブロックからは逃げ延びようと走るエンジン街灯の明かり双方の共同住宅のウォームエンジンの稼働音生活を感じさせるものは確かにあるのここには誰もいない俺しか生きる者も,も動く者も,もいない俺は走っている俺は迫り来るものを感じているから So I think the first one who ran through London like that was Shapek And now he is running. Does it mean everyone who is running through Dark London will turn into a meta creature later or something? Nigger. 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 Maybe that's the way of foreshadowing. I go to the same way. So, 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 I go to the same way. 捕まってたまるか俺は走るふと俺は気づいた長いはずのこの俺の手足がひどく短くてあそうだ少年の頃の姿でいるの幼い俺は逃げる背後から追い続けるあいつから逃れて生贄となった少女など知ったことか俺は俺の力で全てを成し遂げてみせるだから俺を追うな俺を殺すなこの俺俺が俺が俺が王にさえなれば全て一切の問題は消失するのだ背後から迫るものはいずれ消えるだろう Maybe I'm mistaken but isn't that geese voice? 時間時間だけが俺の敵だった Sounds similar 時間さえ俺に味方してくれれば俺は俺は王になることができるのだ。Oh, you want to be king, huh? けれど、けれど、もしも、この身が闇ならば。The darkness disappeared. The coldness lessened. The morning light warmed London from beyond the clouds. Amidst the twitter of small birds near the. B- b- birds. birds near the Thames, where very few people were. Without entering anyone's division, without being noticed by anyone, one silhouette stood still. The engine factories on the far shore of the Thames started up. The figure didn't even grimace at the smell of smoke rising amongst the fog. One silhouette stood on the road on the shore of the Thames, gazing at a single building, at a single window. The silhouette gazed without words at a single window. Oh, it's Moran. The silhouette's name was. Seb- Sebastian Moran, the woman who worked as Am's assistant. Sebastian isn't a woman's name. It is definitely not a woman's name, or maybe that's her family name. And Moran is her first, first name. Who knows? The woman who grasped a formless information network, the long range fragment surveillance, surveillance net. The network covered the entire. Entirety of London. It monitored all Londoners, politicians, and intelligent agents, with agents, agents without being noticed by anyone. Using the information net alone should have been more than enough to fulfill her surveillance mission of Objective A. A small lodging house near the Thames, that was Objective A's residence. That was what she needed to monitor. 
Objective A is, isn't that, uh, Mary? However, there was no need to keep her body active. The woman could see the net from anywhere in London. The ordinator installed in place of her brain was always connected to the fragments, so the woman had no need for her body's optical instruments. There was no need for her to stand there. There was no meaning in gazing at the window. There was no need to use the suggestion camouflage in her arm uniform to remove herself from people's vision and consciousness. There was no need for her to be here. She only needed to receive information from the network. And yet... Mary. I see what's going on. She's jealous. And yet the woman was gazing at the window, whispering to herself. 